I want to think today about how to plan an investigation. So we're thinking about fair testing. So to do this, firstly, I am going to um, launch some rockets. Now, um, to launch a rocket, we need some fuel. And the uh, fuel we're going to use in this rocket is actually just water. So this rocket is just made of a plastic bottle with some fins on the end and then this rubber bit here. Now any rocket works by having something to push against. So a rocket that actually goes up into space, it burns lots of fuel and then it pushes all of the exhaust gases out of the end of the rocket and basically the um, gases going one way makes the rocket go the other way. So if you're pushing the gases downwards, the rocket goes upwards. And if you push the gases that way, the rocket's going to go that way. Now, with this, what we're going to do is we're just going to push all of the water out of the end of the rocket here. And that means if the water gets pushed downwards, where does the rocket go? Upwards. But we need a way to push that water out of there. And we're going to do that with air pressure. Um, so I'm going to actually pump air into there using a bike pump. Now, you may have noticed there's a lot of water involved in here and also it's a rocket, it's going to be going up quite a long way. So clearly that's not a good idea for me to do here in the Fab Science Lab. So we're going to take this one outside. So if you want to follow me outside, we can launch this and see how it works. Come with me. Okay, so this is our water rocket. It's basically just a bottle and our rocket fuel is water. So what we need is we need to push this water out the end really fast and that will push the rocket the other way. And we're going to use air pressure to push the water out. So I've got a pump here and when I pump we can see the air, oh, there we go, we can see the air bubbling up through the water. So there's more and more air squashed into that space which means it really really wants to come out. And when it wants to come out, it's going to have to push this out the end and the rocket's going to go up into the air. So I'm going to pop this down here and I'm going to get pumping. Okay, are you ready? It's getting higher pressure. So what did you think about that rocket launch? It went really, really high, didn't it? When you think all that was making it fly, that rocket fuel, was just water. So when it pushed the water out this end, the rocket went that way. And that air in there is what pushed the water out for it to act as that fuel. Now, that's pretty cool, but we can make that into an investigation. And we're going to try planning an investigation together. So I've got here my planning chart. Now, there are lots of different investigations that we can do in science, lots of different types of investigations, but for this, we're going to be focusing on comparative testing or fair testing. So because we want to compare the different types of rocket launch to see what's best. So firstly, we need to think about um, what are the variables we could change? So what could I change each time I launch the rocket to find the best rocket? So I've got a few ideas here of things that we could change. So we could change the amount of water in the bottle. So maybe we could put um, 100 millilitres in one and then 200 millilitres and 300 millilitres to see what's best. And um, we could change the angle of the launch. So when I launched it out on the field, I just launched it straight upwards. But we could try launching it at different angles and see if that affects how well it flies. Okay. Well, what about the size of the bottle? So we could try different sizes of bottles. So we could try um, a one litre bottle, a two litre bottle, a half a litre bottle, or even a quarter litre bottle to see which is best. Um, we could try pumping it at different speeds. So it could be that if we pump the air in very fast, it launches better. It could be that pumping it slowly works better, or it could be somewhere in the middle. We could change the type of fuel. So what was the fuel in the rocket that I just did? It was just water, wasn't it? So we could um, launch it with water. We could try launching it with other liquids. So what about if we launched it with thicker liquids, maybe like oil or even things like syrup? 
it might work, who knows? Um, and finally, my last idea is that we could try changing the temperature of the water. Because maybe um, filling it with hot water might launch it better, or maybe cold water is better. So these are some ideas of things that we could change. Now there are lots of other things that you could do as well. I'm sure you can think of lots of other things. But we need to think of a few ideas of things that we could change um, for our planning. Now, we need to think about what things we could measure. So when we uh, do these changes, we need to measure something to find out which is the best. Because you can't just go, well, that looked good. We've got to have something that we can record. So we could measure the height of the launch. So we could see how high that rocket flies into the air. We could maybe measure the distance that the rocket travels. So if we uh, launch it at an angle, we can see how far it goes before it lands. We could measure the amount of time that it stays in the air. When we're thinking about measuring, we need to think how we could actually measure these things. So how would we measure the time that it's in the air? We'd need to use a stopwatch, wouldn't we? So if we uh, started the stopwatch as soon as it launched and then stop it when it lands, we could see how long it's in the air. We could measure how straight can it fly? So we could try aiming it at a target and then see how far away from the target it lands. So does it go to one side or the other? We could perhaps measure the speed that it flies or we could even go to something completely different and measure how loud it is when it launches or how loud it is when it lands. So there's always lots of different things that we can measure and they're not always the most obvious things that you think of straight away. So, um, firstly, we need to decide which one of these things we actually want to test. So, um, I could change the amount of water. That would be quite easy to do. So when we're deciding what's it, what we want to test, we need to think about whether it would be an interesting thing to find out, but also whether it's something practical that we can actually do. So yes, we could change the amount of water. Um, can we change the angle of the launch? Yes, we could. If we lean it on something, we could launch it at a different angle. The size of the bottle, yes, I've got a few different sizes of bottle we could try. How fast it is pumped? Now, that's quite a difficult one to actually control, because um, if I said I was going to pump it three times a second and then five times a second, that would be very difficult to actually do. So I don't think that's one that we should use. Um, the type of fuel, well, yes, it would be very interesting to find out how it launches if we fill it up with oil or washing up liquid or golden syrup or something, but that sounds like the messiest thing ever, so we're definitely not going to do that one. Um, and then the temperature of the water, that is something that we could try out. Now, I'm actually going to do the size of the bottle, okay? So there's a few there that we could do, but I'm going to choose the size of the bottle. So I'm going to put that down here, and I'll just lift that up in a moment so we can see that. So that is the thing that we are going to change. And then that means that all of these other things that we could have changed are all our control variables. They're all things that we need to keep the same to make it a fair test. Because when we do a fair test, it's very important that we're only changing one thing at a time. And it's all well and good to say we're only going to change one thing at a time. But unless you've thought about the other things that you can change, how are you going to make sure you keep them the same? So we need to make sure we keep the same amount of water each time so we can measure the water when we put it in. Um, we can keep the same angle of launch every time, which I'm going to do by uh, putting onto a launch, which always stays at the same angle. Um, I'm going to try to pump it at the same speed every time. I can't control that entirely. Um, I could, if we maybe had an electronic pump rather than me pumping it by hand, we might be able to control it better, but I'm just going to do my best to keep that the same. And the type of fuel, we're just going to use water every time, and the temperature of the water is just going to be at the temperature that is outside. We're not going to heat the water up or cool it down, so that's going to keep them all the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of these and move them, I just hold it like this so you can see. I'm going to take all of these post-its and put them into this section, because these are all things that we need to keep the same. all of those on there 
OK, now we need to think about what we're going to measure. And again, we want to think about something that's interesting to measure, so something we'd actually like to find out, and something that practically we can do as well. There's no point saying that we are going to um, measure something that we don't have the right equipment to do. So, the height of the launch, that would be an interesting thing to measure, but you do actually need something called an inclinometer to see how high it goes. And that's quite an expensive piece of equipment, which I'm afraid I don't have one of those, so we're not going to do that. The distance travelled. So if we launch it at an angle, we can see how far it goes and where it comes down. And how can we measure the distance? We could measure it with a metre stick, we could pace it out, um, or a trundle wheel would work. Um, or even, if we can't measure it exactly, if we just do a few launches, we can just see which one is the furthest. So even if we can't have an actual measurement, we can still compare them. But generally, it's better if we can have an actual measurement. So it'd be a good idea to measure it um, using a trundle wheel. OK, what about the time in the air? So what equipment would we use to measure the time in the air? I said before, we'd use a stopwatch, wouldn't we? Now, when we launch um, with a stopwatch, um, there is some time taken between me going, oh, it's launched, and pressing the stopwatch. And again, some with it landing too. So it's something we could do, but because it's not in the air for that long, then we might not be able to measure it quite that well. Okay, how straight does it fly? Now, I think that would be an interesting one. So how could we measure that? So we could give it a target, which is dead ahead from where we are uh, launching it, and then we could just measure how many metres to each side it lands, and that would tell us how straight it has flown. What about the speed? Now, the speed is actually quite a tricky thing to measure, because to measure speed, you need to measure two things and then do some maths to work it out. So you need to measure the distance that it travels and the amount of time it takes to get there. So we would have to measure the distance using a trundle wheel and we'd have to measure the time using a stopwatch and then we'd have to do a calculation to find it out. So we could do that. Um, and then how loud is it? So how could we measure how loud something is? We could just listen to it and think, well, that one sounds louder than that one. But that's not very scientific, is it? So we could use a sound meter, a decibel meter, which can measure the loudness of the sound. And in fact, you can get apps on a phone or an iPad that will measure the sound for you. Um, so we could do that. But the thing that I want to measure today is the distance that it travels, because I want a rocket that goes a long way. So I want to find out how far my rocket goes. So I'm going to take this one um, and I'm going to pop it down over here. Um, so now we have got our investigation planned. So the thing that we're going to measure is the size of the, sorry, the thing that we're going to change is the size of the bottle, and the thing that we're going to measure is the distance travelled. And the things that I'm going to keep the same are the angle of the launch, the temperature of the water, the type of the fuel, how fast it's pumped, and the amount of water. Now we also need to look at these to say, see if any of these are things that we need to control. Now, a lot of them we're not going to be able to control because they're actually things that change um, because of what we're doing, because there are other things we could have measured. So we're not going to be able to measure, uh, so we're not going to be able to uh, control the height of the launch or the time in the air or how loud it is or any of those things, in fact. So we just need to check those out um, to see if there's anything else we need to be thinking about. So those ones are all going to stay there. And then this is now our investigation. So... I said that we're investigating what's the best rocket, but now we could change that to a proper question. So we could say, how does the size of the bottle affect the distance travelled of the rocket? So now we've got a real investigation question which we can try to answer. Now again, we're not going to be doing that one inside because it makes a lot of water go everywhere and it goes a long way. I'm not going to be able to do that in here. So we're going to head outside with the bottles. So I have got a few different sizes. I have got uh, a 250 millilitres, that's a quarter of a litre. I've got a 500 millilitres, that's half a litre. I've got one litre and I've got two litres. So we're going to go out and measure them. But before we do that, we need to think about this box here. What do we think will happen? So we need to make a prediction. So which one do you think is going to be the best? 
So is it a big one because it can hold a lot of water and a lot of air? Or is it a small one because it will be lighter? So there's only one way to find out, isn't there? Let's go do it. So follow me back outside and we shall find out. OK, so I'm going to start with a little bottle, which is 250 millilitres or quarter of a litre. Um, and remember, I've got to keep the angle the same for each of them. So what I've done is I've got a piece of gutter in this box and that's going to make them all fire at the same angle. And I've had to keep the same amount of water and I'm going to try and pump it at the same speed. OK, let's go. Oh, that one went very quick and fairly long way. Half a litre or 500 millilitres. Let's see what this one does. Oh, not quite as far as the 250 millilitres. Okay, next up, one litre. So, so far, um, the 500 millilitre one has been the worst one, then the 250 millilitre went a bit further, and the one litre has gone the furthest. We can't actually see a pattern so far. But I wonder what's going to happen with the big one. So, this is the biggest one we've got two litres. Right, are we ready? Let's go. The two litre went right off to the side and then over here we've got the 200 so that's the 500 millilitre so the half a litre and then over there we've got the 250 millilitre so a quarter of a litre and then the winner is definitely the one litre one which went a really long way <laughs> 